Good morning, everyone. My name is Anne-Marie Band, and today is Wednesday, April the 26th. And this is the Moneyball Morning Report for the Benzinga Pro platform. We've got a couple of changes. First thing, I'm going to go through the ES and the NQ because those are my primary players. And then we're going to jump into the SPY and the Qs. And then we're going to move to the SPXL and the SPXS as I add those. What I think I'm going to do is add a couple of those to the edge so we can start playing these leveraged moves as prices move around, give us some good opportunities to just focus on the broad market. And then that brings me into my wheelhouse, which is of course the futures, but I know there are far more stock traders around there and um, I'm just gonna stick with those spaces for. So let's take a look at what's happening right now. As I mentioned, <clears throat> I said, hey, listen, I think we head down here. Now, I didn't think we'd do it in a day. So the question is, is this a fast move that becomes a failed move? And where will we go if we fall? So let's talk about the reasons. And I use the word reasons in quotations. Yesterday, the uh, banking authorities secured First Republic um, because of the state of their balance sheet. If you watched me on uh, the meta stock system that I did uh, the other day, what we really are seeing is systemic trouble in the regional banks because they're holding the wrong kind of, uh, what's the word? Um, they're holding the wrong kind of securities that will allow them to get over the little hump that they're in right now. So the government's come in to save them. Now that's given everyone a, a fair bit of trouble in terms of saying, oh my goodness, what are we going to do now? And so the market sells off. Remember, markets can be very knee jerk and it on pe people that trade futures, certainly they're going to go, <laughs> I'm going to sell now and ask questions later. And so that happened. On top of that, we had a tremendous amount of put buying, which caused the dealers, who are the guys in the background making everything even, they had to go out and sell in the direction of the move so that their books might be net zero. And then they have to unwind as the buying picks up at the end of the day. So what are we doing now? Listen huge number here. Take a look over to the left. All resistance. We've stayed up above here for the better part of a month and a half, almost two months as we come into the end of April. And what should we do? Well, we should bounce here. There is a pervasive bid under the market. Now, times are changing. Things are getting more ugly. But at this point, sellers are going to go, you know what? I got mine. I got 50 points. I got 60 points. I'm out of here. And they are going to start to buy to cover. Now, when they start to buy to cover, it means they're going to leave the market and push price up. And that's going to leave another auction vacuum. And so we're going to watch for the bounce. Where do the buyers get more uh, confident? They're going to get more confidence above the pre-market high. 41.16 is the number I'm looking for. And then above that, 41.22, 41.35. All right. If the wheels come off the bus, something else nasty comes out. Listen, we are going to have ourselves another drop. Don't get in front of it, though, because that's not what everything else has been telling us has been going on in the past. And any time we look at the market and we go, you know what, this time it's different. We tend to build blinders around ourselves and we don't want to do that, right? So deep dips into 4097, going to be a buy. Listen, do you want to put a limit order there at 4097? I'm not going to. I'm going to let it drop if it happens to do that. And if it bounces and recovers, I'm in. But if it doesn't, 
I am not hanging on because we've got another 40 points to the downside if it happens. Could we stop right around here at this 4080, 4079? Potentially. Potentially. But, you know, I suspect we have a floorboard event. And that's going to be very meaningful for us when we look at the spot. Son of a gun. Put in the wrong number here. <clears throat> All right, taking a look at the cues. Same sort of thing. I said, hey, listen, 12,944, but we could also come into 1275. 12,750. Listen, this is where I think we're going with the cues. They've got to give back some. They've got to, this is a monster move. Monster move. People have to take profit, they have to get nervous. So here's the baseline. We closed under the baseline yesterday, and now we're battling to recover it. If we recover it, and that number is 12,940-ish, if we recover it, we've got the pre-market high at around, wow, just below 13,000, and then 13,071. How do you look at this? Listen, are we above the close of the prior day? Yes. Are we above the open of the prior day? No, that's because it's a bearish candle. If it starts losing 12,900 and you're long, you're going to add risk to your platform and your portfolio. So don't do it. Let them carve out the floor. The guys with super deep pockets or trading desk money, let them do that. And you just follow in. Where's the break low? 12,800, everybody started coming in to buy. That is this number right here, right? Where these uh, daily congestions are, but that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days in that area. So that's a heavy congestion zone. Easily, it could end up being uh, an area that this chart revisits. You gotta be very careful here. I believe the tech is going to fade in general. Right, And what we're going to do is add the tech triple leveraged uh, ETFs, but I have to do things uh, one at a time because, as many of you know, I suffer very easily from sensory overload, so I have to watch out for that. Now, 13,040 to 13,070 upside pressure. We could turn around and have a savage move to the upside because everybody's buying to cover today. All right, we have to watch that opening tick. Let's go to the SPY. Okay, here we are at 407, big number. Congestion zone says we're very likely to revisit. We've got some short 411s that we would love for the price action to come down to 402, right? 405, 404, uh, trading ticks is showing a lot of buying pressure in that area from a floorboard. So easily, we are on the way down here, just not yet. Just not yet. Market does not collapse. So don't get all crazy going, oh my gosh, I gotta cover everything. No, no, you don't. Look at the trend. The buyers are still in control of this market. This was a washout in the market and now everybody's got to defend. So how do the fenders look? They're gonna come in and they're gonna try and get above the close of the prior day. Look at how much weaker the SPY is, right? Are we above the close of the prior day? No. So we've got to get up over 408 to 409 before buyers get excited about what's going on, okay? So we're gonna have to watch the first few pieces of the market. What's gonna be what we're looking for? The last, out of the last four candlesticks, three of them, have come into 406 and and one of them is going to tell us whether it's going to hold it or not by the end of the week right but i do expect a bounce pattern here at the 405s so we'll see what happens there cues Again, underneath the close of the Friday, Microsoft reported, and it was great. I'm so glad we got out of that Boeing because Boeing is just off the rails. I do believe this is part of the military complex motion that's starting to move. That's Lockheed Martin, that's Raytheon, that's 
uh, Boeing, a few others, and then a few other black ops. But those are the guys with the biggest, Lockheed Martin's the guys with the biggest black ops um, contracts, which we know nothing about. They're just there. Sorry about sounding like I smoke cigars. You guys know allergies on the rampage. <clears throat> okay, so now what we, what we want to see here is we did not break a new low overnight. That's good, but the market is struggling here because there's a real battle. There are some sellers that really want to push this market down. Look, we came into 310. One of the lines in the sand that we had yesterday, we got wicks all the way to 307 and then 302. Okay, this market is very likely going to fade. I just don't know if it's going to be today. What you want to make sure of is that there's a lot of risk here going long. You want to be super careful <clears throat> if you're trying to buy a dip. This formation says sell the bounce <clears throat> easily. Could it be a big bounce? Yes. Gets up to 315, gets up to 316. Don't think about shorting just yet. Let it collapse and then follow along. You don't have to eat the whole elephant in one bite. All right, let's go to the SPXL. We're going to look at this. These uh, lines are going to get more definitive as time goes round. But right now, we are looking at the triple leveraged long, and you can see resistance up ahead, support below, and it's in um, a triangle. So triangles often break in the direction of trend, and so it's got downward motion here, but this pervasive buying is still something to look at. So on the... Um, Benzinga report that we did, the ETF report, we're looking at this and we're looking for the fade to buy and the bounce to sell, right? And you want to get in and out on the same day, simply because these things don't run very hot, very long, and they constantly rebalance. If you want to take it for a day, it's okay. Start hanging on four or five days. It gets kind of tricky. Right, So you, you just want to be super careful here. But these guys are coming down into a bounce zone. You can see they're holding a floor already today. So again, what do you want to look for? If it gets above 71, you can ride it up. As soon as it gets to 73, you got to get out. Right? You want to get out there simply because the daily chart is not showing us any kind of uh, buying pressure. It's actually showing selling pressure. Okay? So... SPXS, that's a triple leverage short. This one, clearly you can see that the buyers are still in control. Every single time frame has got the negative ribbon showing here in TrendSpider. So you know that the bounces are going to be sell zones. That's really what it's telling us today. So notice, if a bounce is a sell zone in a short, it means the market's going to go up. Okay, so it's been moving up into the resistance zone. Could we see another big sharp move into 1850? Yes, but if it gets there, it's a sell. If it comes down into this 1740, it's going to be a buy. Okay, with the stop being at about 17. All right, so careful. I know I've added more content. But I think it's going to help us. A lot of us are trading these. Not too many of us trade futures, and I really want to give everyone some more exposure. All right? I'll see you all tomorrow.